Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with the new topic and the new topic is what? It is the hydrothermal coordination. We've seen the hydro power plant in quite a detail. We've seen the thermal power plant in a great detail. Today we see what? We see the coordination of the two. I will give the heading hydro thermal coordination. Now what is coordination? So coordination is the share of responsibilities to come up with a combined solution. To come up with a combined solution. Over here, we will be coordinating the two plants. We would be running them together. Why? To have an economic solution, to, to reduce the cost. Our, our aim is what? To reduce the cost of generation of electricity so the cost of electricity is least as possible. Now, if we talk about the hydro, we have water. If we talk about the thermal, we have water. So we have got water in both of them, but the usage is different. In one, the water is being used directly, whereas in the other, it is first being converted into steam and then that is doing the useful work. Then you have what you have the capital cost, you have the running cost. So the hydro capital cost is quite greater than the thermal but then the running cost of the thermal is quite greater than the the hydro because of what because of the uh, the, uh, the 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 cost of the fuel the fuel is required over there right so we have to come up with a combined solution so as that the cost of the electricity is minimum right yes both use water both use water if i write over here if i write over here is about the hydro if i write about over here is the thermal so over here the water usage is what the water usage is directly it is being used the hydro energy of the water is utilized whereas over here the water usage is indirect which means first it is converted into steam and then the steam does the useful work you don't have any fuel over here, no fuel. Over here you have to use fuel. And that is in the form of coal or oil. Oil what? The kerosene oil, which is the high speed diesel. Now, for the availability of firm power, you need to have what? You need to have mass storage. You need to have mass storage of water. And why is that storage of water necessary? For, a, for the availability of firm power. So water uh, storage is necessary. Over here you need to have the storage of fuel. Water storage is not necessary but you need to have storage of fuel. Why? Because, uh, because there may be transportation delays, there may be general coal shortages, there may be coal strikes, minor strikes, you could be at war. And the most important thing is the fluctuating prices in the international market. So you should have fuel at least available for three months. At least the storage you should have is for three months, right? Yes. Similarly, then if you have what, if I talk about, uh, you have seasonal variations involved over here. In the hydro, you've got seasonal variations. For instance, uh, in the high rainfall season, you've got a higher amount of water. In the lower uh, 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 rainfall season, you don't have that quantity of water. Whereas over here, it is not applicable, the seasonal variation. Mainly in the thermal power station, we talk about the hydro and the thermal is because these are the important ones. Solar energy is not important because and nowadays in the summer days you've got the solar energy you are you can generate a lot of power but what about the winter season and the shorter days and, and and reduced intensity of the sunlight so what would you do with that right similarly wind you have got sometimes you've got wind sometimes you don't have wind wind is not a constant source of energy the constant source is of course the hydro and the thermal nowadays it's all about thermal in Pakistan, it's all thermal, mainly thermal. Warsak Dam, you've got, so the uh, Warsak Dam, the lifetime is over. You've got Tarbela, you've got Mangla Dam, which are, which are you know, operational. But nowadays, you know, the water uh, is at the critical level. Water level is very low over there. Dead level, it is called, or whatever it is, it is very low over there. So the main operation is from the thermal power plants. In Europe, Europe side, America side, they don't have hydro over there. They mainly have thermal because they've got fuel. Saudi Arabia, they've got fuel oil, right? Yes. 
The European countries can also go for nuclear. Nuclear is quite cheap compared to the thermal as well. But then you have to take some extensive, intensive uh, safety measures, right? Because you've got radiations involved over there. High radiations. You cannot see them and, it, and they're spreading and, and their results are very dangerous. Right? Yes. So, you cannot use nuclear thermal, you, you cannot use nuclear power plant because of the uh, environmental hazards. The radiations are enormously, enormously dangerous. So, uh, countries talking of nuclear war, no country could dare to use nuclear weapons. If it's America, if it's Russia, it's, if it's Pakistan, we've got the nuclear weapon, but we cannot dare to use it. Nobody in the world can dare to use it, right? Yes, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. Nuclear weapon is not a joke. Anyways, hydro has got a high capital cost. It has got a very high capital cost. Whereas the capital cost for the thermal is lower. Similarly, the running charge is quite low. The running cost is quite low over here. Whereas over here, the running cost is high. Why? Because of the usage of fuel. You have a line losses involved. Transmission losses. Transmission losses are mainly associated with the hydro. Transmission losses are mainly associated with the hydro. Why? Because they have to be uh, built at a particular site remote from the uh, what? From the uh, from the load centers. Because they need a huge reservoir area, a dam has to be constructed. That is a very huge area. Whereas the thermal do not require that much of an area. It could even be built inside of the load center. I told you in the previous video, the Faisalabad uh, 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 thermal power plant is inside the Faisalabad city. If you talk about the Tarbela, so Tarbela to then uh, Faisalabad circuit, Tarbela to Multan, Tarbela to even Hyderabad and Karachi. So this is a huge distance and a huge amount of transmission line losses involved with the hydro. Whereas in the in the thermal case, this is significantly less. This is significantly less. Fine. So we talk about the coordination of the two and between and, and first before the coordination we talk about a water conversion factor or a water conversion coefficient. So basically this is the water that is being converted to, 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 to electrical output finally. So we talk about a water conversion factor which is represented by mu I believe. This sort of a symbol, this V sort of a symbol, this is called mu, I believe, and this is this is equal to W T upon W H. Yes, W T upon W H. So you write this down for yourself. What is this W? This W is the weight of water required to produce one kilowatt hour of electrical energy. I will write. I will write. This W is what? This is the weight of water required to produce what to produce one kilowatt hour of electrical energy so wt means what for thermal which is the weight of water in the thermal case required to produce one kilowatt hour energy similarly h is for hydro which means this is the weight of the water required in the hydro power plant to produce one unit of electrical energy yes yes now if we talk about the input function if we talk in terms of the input function so the in the in the thermal case the input function that we have is f which is the uh, the input function or the objective function which is h times x h is the heat x is the cost of fuel and in the thermal we've got the discharge q we've got the, in the hydro we've got the discharge q right yes so now if I talk about what if I talk about if I take the derivatives or if I say from here this is the definition of the water conversion factor right so from here I could write what that the water conversion factor mu times q is equal to the input function f of the thermal part if I take the derivative if I take the derivative so v times mu times dq Q is with respect to the hydro plant, hydro plant so dp h o and df 
with respect to dp so this is with respect to dp thermal so i would write over here dpt so this equation we've got this equation which is called what which is called the coordination equation this is called the coordination equation right yes now now we saw in the previous video that df dp was equal to lambda so i would write over here i would write over here is that and can i write over here i can write over here yes so that my mu times dq with respect to dph which is equal to df with respect to dp thermal this would be equal to lambda which is the incremental cost of electrical energy if no losses are considered if no losses similarly case number two number two would be what that this mu times dq with respect to d p h would be equal to d f with respect to d p t would be equal to lambda into one minus d p l which is the loss equation with respect to d p so t or h the one with which is, is associated it could either be thermal or hydro this is what this is if losses are considered the transmission losses are mostly considered if we talk about right yes sir so what do you think should we move on to examples should we move on to examples yes so i will finish this video and i will continue with the examples in the next video and we also have what we also have the base load station and the and the peak load station so the base load station is what that should be running continuously to provide you what to provide you with the with the average load or the base load whatever it is and the peak load is what that is the maximum amount of load that is occurring for a shorter interval or a particular interval of time during the load curve so this is what you have to uh, also uh, you know uh, the coordination is also based on what is the base load what is the peak load so depending on that you would have to specify that which hydro or thermal which one would act as which load station base or peak if i talk about our country so mostly we had the uh, the the uh, we had let's say we talked about the dams we have Warsak dam we have Mangla dam we have uh, we have Tarbela dam Ghazi Barota etc so we we say that we have a lot of mass storage water storage so we just uh, and the operating cost is also less so we use them as what we use them as the base load station similarly the peak load station we use the thermal power plants but nowadays the mostly the generation the base load are what are the uh, thermal power plants and again i told you the water in the dams is at the dead level the, the useful life of warsak dam is almost over so we're using them as a peak load station and in the interconnected grid system i told you that this is a huge advantage of the interconnected grid system that you can use your lower efficient plants as well as you could say the older plants as the peak load stations why because they would be working for, operating for a lesser interval of time right yes so uh, similarly if you talk about the european countries so they they would uh, operate the thermal power plants as their uh, base load station right similarly if you talk about saudi arabia so saudi arabia would commit the thermal to their base load also as well as to the because they uh, as well as to the peak because they've got huge reserves of the fuel right yes china if you talk about china so they've got the the largest dam of the world the three gorges dam and they say that this would be enough to 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 uh, for how much for a hundred years of power generation for them so no problem for them if they have base load they've got the peak load they would be committing the three gorges dam to that right yes so that is just a little overview of this the coordination equation the water conversion factor keep this in your mind we'll solve a number of examples in the next video Till the next video, take care of yourself, everyone around you, do remember me in your prayers, do subscribe to the channel, goodbye.